welcome. I'm so excited that you're here, and I'm so honored to be speaking for the Travel and Adventure Show, especially on behalf of Patty. Because scuba diving really did change my entire life. And if you'd ever told me when I first started diving, because I was not a good diver in the beginning, that I would be speaking for Patty, I would never have believed it. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself and how I got started and how you can help the oceans. So here you can see me on television in Los Angeles. I work with KTLA. And I just wanted to give you a little information from my friends at KTLA. Let's see if this is going to work today. So why Philadelphia? It's important to get away. It's one of the only ways to get a really good perspective. This adventure seeker has been to 99 countries. But the creator of We Said Go Travel. We said go travel. We said go travel. Head over to we said go travel .com. So it looks like from those pictures of me with KTLA that I do everything scary. But I have to tell you, in the very beginning, I did nothing scary. I was scared of everything. But how my travel adventures got started was on this boat, the Royal Cruise Line in 1981. My parents took us to the Mediterranean. And in all honesty, growing up at school, I thought that history, or what we now call social studies, was really boring. And we were in the Mediterranean, we walked through the pyramids in Egypt, the Parthenon in Greece, I put notes in the Western Wall in Jerusalem, I saw the most amazing library in Ephesus in Turkey, and I thought, how did anyone ever make all of these incredible places and history boring? And that was when I, my whole life turned into trying to find more of these amazing places. And as much as I was interested in travel, I was not interested in swimming. I had a near drowning as a child, and I was afraid of the water. I did not swim, I did not like the water, I didn't want to talk about the water, but in college, my best friend was an NCAA synchronized swimmer. And every night I went to the library, I love the library, and every day she went to the gym. And when the library closed, I'd pick her up from the gym. And one day I looked at her and I said, hey Barb, do you think it's weird that I come to the gym every single day but I never go inside? And she said, that's not very smart. So she taught me to swim. And one of the things I think about, a lot of people talk to me about being afraid. And they say, I'm afraid to go scuba diving or I'm afraid to do different things. And the thing I like to remind people is you can fall down seven and get up eight. You just have to take small, small steps and try again. So if you are afraid of the water like I was, you can try snorkeling, snuba, small classes. And the most important thing is to have a really, really good teacher. So just behind us is the Patty booth. And at Patty, they have great lessons. And you even start learning online, e-learning. And later, at the end of my talk, I'm actually going to give away an e-learning course. And if you come over and sign up for the newsletter, you can have 10% off your next class. So I recently took a class when I was in Turks and Caicos because I had been out of the water all of COVID. I took a refresher because all of us need to keep learning. It's very important to be safe underwater. So for those of you who haven't been scuba diving yet, First, we learn in the pool. You can see some people in the pool and then the people in the open ocean. So I have to tell you that I wasn't so good at class, even though I was willing. So I tried and I tried. And um, I learned in Monterey Bay. I was living in San Francisco. And in Monterey Bay, there's the giant kelp forest. So I love the giant kelp forest. The diving is spectacular. It's world-class diving. But while I was there, people explained to me about warm water diving. Less gear, less weights, better visibility, more fish. And I was like, I would like some of that. But the issue was, at the time, I was an elementary school teacher. So I had the time off, but the exotic trips were a bit out of my price range. So you can see me here with some of my students. We had brought up some special friends to class. It's a giant, uh, giant snake. 
a real live camel, and you can see us doing science. So because I wanted this exotic diving, like we're here with so many amazing adventures, somehow I ended up at Club Med in the mountains. Yes, that's what happened. I wished and I wished and I wished to go somewhere really warm for exotic diving, and I got a job at Club Med. And my first season, I went to Colorado. And when they offered me the job, I said, no, 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 I want to go scuba diving. You don't have places in the mountains. She's like, do me this favor and we'll work it out for you. So you can see, I told you that I love the library. So that's me at Clement with my sister. I'm the one with no teeth. And that's my character, Marge, the nerdy librarian. So I used to play her in the dating game. And surprisingly, I always won. So after I worked for Club Med, I met some people that worked on a cruise ship. And this seemed incredible to me because cruise ships are a lot like Club Med, but every night your house moves and you wake up somewhere else and they go to a lot of places with the most fantastic scuba diving. So I had an entire contract working for Princess Cruises where every week I went scuba diving in Grand Cayman or Cozumel. I had another contract where I went diving every week in St. Thomas. We worked with a great dive shop, and every week we worked towards a different specialty class. So I learned boat diving, navigation diving, deep diving, wreck diving. So over and over again, if you're someone like me who has history of being afraid, it's really helpful to dive with the same buddy and the same instructor and the same location because it helps to have practice to take small, tiny steps to get better. Over time, I became a master scuba diver, I'm a dive master, and I, I've been diving since 1990. So one contract, we even went with the ship up to Alaska, and my buddy and I decided to try dry suit diving. So I don't know if any of you have tried dry suit diving, but uh, it's definitely a lot more weight, and you wear three finger gloves, so you can still say okay. And you, you have a hood, but you know your cheeks are still there. So I said to the instructor, what about my face? He said, don't worry, Lisa. When your face goes numb, you won't notice. And I was like, that's the plan? Because yeah, you'll be fine, get in the water. So <laughs> here are some adventures I've had since the cruise ship, following my passions and becoming a journalist. I've done stories around the world. The one that looks like a wall of barracudas, that's Barracuda Point in Sipidan, and that might be, it, it really looked more like a tornado of fish. In this picture, it looks like a wall, but that's me. And it, it, I will never forget that, and I would love to go back there. If it's not on your bucket list, I highly, highly recommend it. It was incredible. This picture at the top with the shark, one of my buddies took, and someone told me it looks like I'm too close to the shark, but that, honestly, just perspective, I'm not that close to the shark. That was from um, scuba diving in Cuba with at Gardens of the Queen on a liveaboard, which if you are looking for a way to do more scuba, four times a day on a liveaboard, eat, scuba, sleep, repeat. So you do all day long. A lot of times do four dives a day. It's, I can't wait to do it again. And then the one at the bottom is me in Puerto Rico filming with orbits for a web series. And this is a, a trip I did to Beaches, Turks, and Caicos. It was a journalist trip, and this footage, Patty, the beach is used for the Patty International Women's Dive Day. So if you're new to diving, I just wanted to show a little bit of fun that we had underwater.
because the, the underworld well, the underworld life, the underworld world is so amazing. There's so much to see and do. And one of the ways that we can really make a difference when we're traveling is to participate in helping our planet. So Patty has ocean torch bears, and there are so many different projects you can get involved in. And one of the best things that's happened for me around the world is to find ways to share stories about ways that everyone can get involved, that I can get involved. So if you haven't been to Bonaire, this picture is from being on a drive with Buddy Dive in Bonaire. Bonaire is one of my most favorite places. So the ABC Islands are, it's the Southern Caribbean. It's just above Venezuela if you were looking on the map. When I was working on the cruise ship, we went frequently to Aruba and Curacao. At that time, many, many, many decades ago, the cruise ships didn't go to Bonaire. And they have in some limited way started, but I went on a different trip. And this is me in this picture behind a coral restoration area. So Buddy Dive has been a very big proponent of how do we help our coral reefs. You've probably heard about coral bleaching, and you may have seen in different places around the world the way people are trying to make a difference. Different dive shops and different tours and boards in different countries are trying to figure out how do we help the coral reefs. So one of the ways is you can get involved is you can do a coral reef. Uh, they do a volunteer class, like a mini certification in Bonaire. You can go and help clean. You can help essentially plant these trees. I've seen incredible installations in Indonesia. There's a big project in Costa Rica. So it's something you can look for when you're on your trip. Maybe you do seven days of diving, but one day you work to help the reef. Now I told you I like to see different creatures when I'm diving. So the lionfish, the very, very first time I saw a lionfish was in the Red Sea. And that is where the lionfish belongs. The lionfish belongs in that ecosystem. It is very important. Things need to live where they have the right temperature, they have the right predators, they, they live somewhere. Unfortunately, the lionfish is now in Florida and the Caribbean and they do not belong. They're invasive. So where they were Originally, they had a lot of babies, but the babies didn't live. Well, now it's much more friendly to them in Florida and the Caribbean. They have all these babies, and all the babies live, and they just eat and eat and eat and eat the reef, and it's a very big problem. So many dive shops, many dive masters, many people, many countries are trying to figure out what to do. So there's lionfish derbies, and people are going out and hunting the lionfish to help save the reef. Now, the thing that you may or may not know about lionfish is they're really tasty. So there's a project, uh, I, saw, I met some of the people at the DEMA, at the dive show, where they're actually training chefs about the lionfish because it's very good eating and we want them out of the water. So if chefs know that lionfish is good eating and easy to prepare and they're buying it, more people will fish it. So it's something you can do. When you see lionfish on the menu, eat it. Like I said, it's very tasty. This lionfish that you see in this picture they had, cat, they had killed it, prepared it, we ate it the same day, and it was really excellent. So it's an interesting way that you can help save our planet, is you can eat this fish that does not belong in this area. Now, this is Liga Liga Lagoon in Fiji, and many people want to stay in an overwater bungalow. So it's a beautiful place, there's great scuba diving, but the people of the island of Malolo are helping the Fijian crest of iguana. So I have a little video for you here, and you can learn about their habitat. The tropical dry forest is the most endangered habitat on our planet, and they are planting a bowl of 200 trees a month. So you can come and help plant trees. Thank you for learning about the Fijian Crested Iguana. So that, I have a, a very vibrant YouTube channel. I've been on television. You can see some of my stories. So one of the stories I did about the Solomon Islands was for Smithsonian Magazine. So I was invited for the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Guadalcanal. And you can see me here with two gentlemen. They and some of their team were trying to teach me to make shell money. That's what I'm wearing as a necklace and as a headdress. And I have a little bit of a clip from when I was working with a television show called The Jet Set TV. In the Solomon Islands, there's 900 islands here. I flew here on Fiji Airways, 
technology and then three hours to get to the Samaritan Islands. What I always wanted was that she taught me how to make cloth out of bark, which you have to pound it. The groom's family will give it to the bride. The diving in the South Pacific is fantastic. Because of the battles that happened here, I see many wrecks underwater. Japanese wrecks, American wrecks, and tremendous creatures. Eagle rays, cuttlefish, turtles. It's really spectacular. So different places around the world, a lot of times we go for the scuba diving, but we can learn about the culture, the history. So one of the most amazing things happened when I came home from the Solomon Islands. So I was there for the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Guadalcanal. And my dad is a dentist. And my dad said to me, hey, would you like to do an interview for your story? And I said, yeah, I'd love to do an interview for my story. Who do you know that was in the Battle of Guadalcanal? So Roy Rausch is a gentleman, a soldier. He was in the Solomon Islands. He also fought as a pilot in the Korean War. And I was able to interview him. He was 17, turning 18 during the battle. And he gave, a, it was amazing that who you could meet because of scuba diving. Because of my love of scuba diving, which changed everything I did, changed my career, and led me to all these stories, we met this incredible man. So another thing I want to tell you about is how sometimes you don't always get exactly the perfect information. So here you can see that red dot is Indonesia, and a lot of people talk about Bali. So Bali is one of the islands in Indonesia. It's the largest archipelago on our planet. There's so many different islands and so many different things to do. So you can see this large island, Kalimantan. That is very close to Sipadan. I showed you earlier the tornado of Barracuda. Barracuda Point is Sipadan, and we traveled overland through Kalimantan, and then I took a boat to Darawan. So in Darawan, they said, hey, would you like to go to this other island, Kakavan, and swim with the stingless jellyfish? And honestly, I was like, really? Is this one of those things where it's like a candid camera and you're telling me it's a stingless jellyfish and I'm going to jump in with thousands and thousands of jellyfish and it's not going to work out so great for me? I did it anyway. They also did this weird thing where they dragged me like on a water ski line, but as a snorkeler. I don't really recommend that. But anyway, we got to the area and because the island developed, the lake came up, the island moved up. The lake was separated from the ocean. The jellyfish had no predators. They adapted, evolved, they changed whatever word you want to use, and they don't stink. So then I went to Palau. And in Palau, they told me, it is the only place in the world that you can swim with a stingless jellyfish. And I said, is that your final answer? And they said, yes, this is the only place. I said, well, I'm not entirely sure that's true because in Indonesia, I already did that. And they said, no, this is the only place. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to fight you. But it turns out on the internet, I found at least four places that claim they are the only place that you can swim with this stingless jellyfish. So remember, is there truth in the internet? Sometimes. So in Palau, I did again swim with this stingless jellyfish. And there have been times over the last decade or so that jellyfish have appeared and disappeared. They go into a larval phase. So if you want to do that, just double check if it's an option for tourism. Especially right now, because, I mean, Palau is incredible. If you go to Palau, you want to dive at Blue Corner. They put a D-ring into a the coral and onto your BCD, and you basically fly like a kite. And you're just in the current, flying, and turtles and sharks and fish, they're just going by you. I was like, just leave me here forever. Don't come back and get me. Anyway, one of the things that's happened more recently with Palau that I hope more countries will take part in is there's the Palau Pledge. This is something that gets stamped in your passport on arrival, and this is a pledge from you, the visitor, to the children of Palau that you will respect and care for their home. And I think this is so beautiful. This project actually won awards at Adweek at Cat Lion. And I hope that everyone remembers, you know, we talk a lot about uh, take only photos and leave only bubbles, but it really is our responsibility when we're in the underwater world to help and make it better. 
So I just wanted to show you a lot of people ask me about being scared and being brave. And one of the things that comes up a lot is how sharks are so maligned in the media. And sharks are awesome. Sharks are amazing. So I hope that if you are the tiny bit afraid of sharks, that it's something that you will consider investigating and learning more about. I was at Beaches, Turks and Caicos for Halloween, and yes, you can trick or treat in the islands. They have candy. But um, much more exciting to me was uh, being here with the sharks, and we had such incredible dives. If, uh, in Turks and Caicos, if you've never been there, I've been diving there five times, one of my most favorite places. I just on uh, this shark all the close to me. So <laughs> I was filming that way, and the shark was over here. But I love Turks and Caicos. So here's a story about me from Business Insider. Like I told you, I have a YouTube channel. I have a new video podcast on Spotify and uh, interviewed Deepak Chopra and uh, Patricia Schultz, who often comes to the travel show. She wrote 1,000 Places to See Before You Die. So I've been very, very fortunate. Like I said, when I worked on the cruise ship, my house moved. And I spent a lot of time backpacking. This was a day that my backpacking partner met me. I couldn't carry all the backpacks, but guess what I could. And one thing I wanted to say about being afraid and, and finding out of how to be in the world is as a child, I had a lot of accidents. Everyone told me I was very clumsy. It turns out I'm not clumsy. I had a problem with my eyes. And it wasn't until I got divorced and I was in my 40s that I actually fixed my eyes. I don't run into anything anymore. And I could even play sports with a ball and parallel park. So one of the things that happened in fixing my eyes is my eye doctor sent me on this journey of now that my eyes work together, that I could learn all the things that I could do that I never could do before. And I started a project, 50 Challenges Before I Turned 50, I have a book coming out in September about this project. And there were a lot of things, including jumping out of a perfectly well-maintained airplane that I said I would never do, but I actually did. And this project, skydiving, taught me my most important lesson about bravery. So I always believed some people like my skydiving instructor were brave, and people like me were not brave. I'm scared, and he's brave. But when I went to skydive, it was cloudy, and I had to wait two extra hours for my turn. And over those two extra hours, every minute, I got more and more sure that I was leaving without getting in the plane. But I did get in the plane, and I found out that my skydiving instructor, the guy that gets paid to throw himself out of the airplane, he said to me, oh, you went diving with bull sharks in Mexico? I went to shark school, and I went diving with bull sharks. So I said, yeah, I went diving with bull sharks. He said, oh, I'm afraid of that. I was like, wait a second. You're afraid of anything? You jump for a living out of planes. And that was when I realized it's very specific. You know, when I, I don't remember ever being afraid of sharks, but I'm sure the first time I saw a black tip reef shark, or actually I think the first thing I saw was a nurse shark, that I was very afraid. But the more we see something and the more we learn about it, the more we care about it, the more we feel comfortable. So I just want you to think about bravery is not like a light switch. Everybody here is at least a little bit brave. And so one of the things I have found from all of my travels, this is me in Kenya. And I went to visit a school after being on safari and I was showing the students my pictures. And I know that the more places I go and the more chance I see life through someone else's eyes, it changes my perspective. So we live on different continents. And here you can see when I was backpacking, I stayed in this gear in Mongolia. So we live in different houses and we play different games. You can see me here with my hula hoop. I do travel around the world with a hula hoop. And I did have permission from the chief of the village to bring my hula hoop in to the Maasai warriors. And actually some of them were quite good at hula hooping. But you can see we dress differently. We live in different kinds of buildings, but we're really much more similar than we are different. And I can tell you from meeting children all around the world that parents everywhere want the same thing for their children. They want them to be happy, they want them to be healthy, and they want them to have their best life. 
So you can see this is me with kids in Indonesia, Vanuatu, Vietnam, um, Tonga, and Samoa. And so I hope as you plan your adventures being here at the Travel and Adventure Show, you think about going somewhere different, think about scuba diving somewhere different. And in order to get you started on your adventure, uh, like I said, if you go over to the Patty booth and sign up for the newsletter, you get 10% off your next e-learning course. But for today, under somebody's chair is one of my cards, and we're going to be giving away an e-learning course. So see if you have my card under your chair. Okay, so see me afterwards, you're getting a free course. And someone else's chair has my card. Anybody find my card under your chair? Did you find it? That okay. So your adventure starts right here. Your adventure starts right here in Chicago. See me afterwards. I just have to get your email. So we're giving away two City Pass tickets. I used City Pass all day yesterday. It was so great. It's a two hundred and twenty-eight dollar value. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming to chat with me. You can find me all over the internet at Lisa Niver. Patty is on Instagram at Patty TV. I'm happy to take any of your questions, but have great adventures and thank you so much.